Good morning. I'm morning from Smoky. So today what I thought I would do is I thought I would give you a tour of the rockery. There are a huge variety. I love rockeries because what you can do is get so many different plants in a very small area. What you can hopefully see is then we have a pond in front. I'll give a tour of the pond at a different day because I think 10 minutes on the rockery will be a pretty decent amount. So just at the beginning I thought I'd talk about how you construct a rockery before I give you the tour. Primarily you need rocks in the name and what you need is small crevices. These plants can be really prolific as you see the rock roses have spread really far. So it's quite important that they're kind of contained and then they spread from there. They generally can survive in quite nutrient poor environments and in your local garden centre they might be listed as alpine plants. Alpine plants means that they're from not necessarily the Alps but might be the Alps, but it means that they are used to an environment where they are more exposed to frost, they are more hardy, which should hopefully mean that they can survive being in quite a, a small soil environment where they're going to have quite a lot of extremes that go from dry, which in the Alps it gets really, really hot in the summer, to very, very cold, because they don't have much uh, insulation necessarily from the soil that other plants in the main garden get. They tend to be quite hardy. You can get quite a lot that are semi-hardy and don't survive. But generally, they're all perennials. They come back every year if you don't hack them back too bad. Which I'll talk about those two later. Then it's kind of up to you what compost you use. So with ours, we used a mixture of ericaceous and general compost. If you want to grow things which in the UK we just associate with more alpine environments, which are things like uh, heathers, then you need to use ericaceous. It's more acidic. But most of the plants I've got here are tolerant of most soil types and in fact probably are some of them particularly things like thrift are quite happy with chalky alkaline soils rather than acidic which is good because we're on chalk here and that's quite important when you pick your plants so you put the rocks in and then you fill in the soil and that's the way around it should be so you put all your rocks in and then you create little crevices between them you see the rocks are packed quite close together but then the plants cover them so you don't realize how many rocks there are now for a tour of the plants in the rockery we have a cat hello smoky He's decided to join me this morning. Helpful, aren't you? You want to give him a tour? That's your bum. We have, just coming through, this is Oxalis. It has little corns underground and these little pretty pink flowers. It can spread quite widely, but this one hasn't really, so that's good. I will hopefully be able to tell you which, I'll put down on the bottom, which type it is. Okay, next to this, is what's colloquially known as bugle herb, but as actually its Latin name is Aduga reptans. I've got two types of this. This is the variegated version, which has lovely like purpley leaves and beautiful purple flowers. It spreads like wildfire, it sends out runners. So it's great for filling in a space, but I have to keep it under control. Another one where you can make loads and loads of freebies to give you a friends and family, you can see it's kind of going a bit rampant. Next door to it here is a sedum that's just come from my parents' rockery. No idea what species it is. And then up there looking a bit bedraggled is a type of phlox. It's the only phlox actually I've got on this rockery. Phloxes do really well in rockeries but they, again they can spread. It's got a pink flower. Um, so later on in the year when maybe I do another update you'll be able to see that. So that's this one over here. This thing in full flower here is a saxifrage. These do really well in rockeries. They've got a really tight closed leaf and then they produce flowers after flowers throughout the year so really really good in the rockery and behind it is meant to be slightly variegated actually um a variegated thrift now to be a thrift you have to be pink didn't know that until recently when i was researching them so thrift are normally found in coastal areas they like really dry well draining soils so they work well in a rockery between gaps. You can see over here it's more variegated. Over here I think maybe it's just not quite getting enough light. So sometimes plants can revert back to being non-variegated, particularly if they aren't getting enough sunlight. Then they'll want to produce more chlorophyll and so you lose the variegated nature of their leaves. But it's beautiful. This little one down here is a type of erodium. In fact, this one I think is Flore Pleno. It's got a nice little pink flower, can you see that? But you can see like things like sedums, this is more sedum, they take over everywhere. So they're good at filling gaps, but you need to make sure you control them. This is a golden thyme, 
or Thymus, Italian here, Thymus. Thymus Dune Valley. It's recovering slowly, you can just about see some leaves. I'm hoping that it will recover itself quite well, but we'll see. Behind it is another type of seed, and now this one doesn't spread as far. This one is a variegated one. Variegated means that you have a mixture of areas with chlorophyll and areas without, and it gives quite a pretty pattern. And this one is Sedum Campscartium variegatum, because it's variegated. And it has a beautiful yellow and red flower, so later on in the summer when I kind of give you an update, you'll see, see that. This poor thing here, which is slowly recovering. I think I see a couple of leaves, is another type of thyme. I think this one has a purple rather than a pink flower. Again, I hacked it back at the, probably the wrong time of year, but we're hopeful it might come back. So this is a rock rose. I can't find the tag for it. It's a pink one. It's got quite a bright pink flower. It's really good. A non-variegated sedum. I don't have a tag for it, but we will maybe be able to work out what it is. It has a bright yellow flower. Down here, this little tiny leaf here, it produces beautiful purple flowers. So I'm hoping just those little kind of heart-shaped leaves there will do the same this year. Another thrift. I need to deadhead it. So if you do have thrift, what you need to do is when they finish flowering, so it doesn't go to seed, you just need to take the heads off. So like this one, just take them off. A white rock rose, which is doing beautifully at the moment. Look at those flowers, they're stunning. But we do have this Acer that's doing quite well now. Here. Some of the leaves got scorched or I don't know what might have happened. Maybe it got a bit dry. But it does have new growth coming through, particularly at the bottom. See, some brand new leaves there. So it is looking quite good. It's in quite a shady spot here, but it gets sun in the morning. This little guy is next door to a weed. I need to weed my rockery. I can't remember what he's doing, but he is surviving down the back here. So hopefully, this is an extension. So actually the original rockery stopped here. And then I've extended it back here. I've not really had much luck establishing many plants, but what I hope to do is maybe just take some cuttings from ones over there or, or runners off some of them and fill in these gaps. It's a bit shady over here, so I'm, I'm not surprised really. It needs a bit of weeding. We do feed him. And that is a little kind of iris-like thing. I don't know why I don't have a label. I'll look it up and we'll put the name down the bottom. It's beautiful. It has these little blue flowers and it's kind of spread up there, so that's good. This is a baby of um, probably that one over there that I've transplanted here, which is another thrift. I'll get the proper names for them. <laughs> no, actually I won't know the proper name for that one. So this is a uh, one of the babies of that one. So this is Armeria, which is the genus for thrifts. It's related to them, but apparently to be a thrift you have to be pink. So this is a white one, which is actually a baby of this white one here. It needs to be deheaded, but it's doing really well. We have this red rock rose here, which is just a little bit behind the white one. The pink one you'll notice isn't in flower yet, but this red one is, so that's doing really well. And down here we have another bugle horn. This isn't a variegated version, though. this is, you see this flower is much more blue than, than purple. So you get lots of different varieties. We'll hopefully find them and write them at the bottom. So that's over here. We've got, thrift is really good at babies. So we've got some baby thrifts here, which I will hopefully transplant. Right, and then what we've got is we've got gypsophilia. So this is a white gypsophilia, with little white flowers, quite small leafed. This, I feel, is a creeping thyme, but I will check. It's got covered in little blue flowers when it does finally flower, and you can imagine what cascade of blue that will be. This is a purple gypsophilia, which has gone completely mental. Look at all the flowers on this. Oh gosh. This here, with the little heart-shaped leaves, this is another erodium. This one has red flowers, so it's not as prolific at flowering as gypsophilia. Oh look, hello cat. And down here we've got a little red saxifrage. It's not doing as well as its counterparts on the top of the rockery, but it's still got flowers, it's still doing quite well, and more flowers to come. And down here we have a little tiny thing trying to survive. I can't remember what this is called as well. I'm a bit rubbish at remembering them, but I'm pretty sure this is a creeping time. And this, maybe I'll find it in my notes. 
but hopefully it will flower and we'll find out what it is. Flowers are the easy way of working out what things are. And down here we've got another sedum. This one's a blue silvery leafed one, very pretty. And actually another thrift. So I've got three baby thrifts that maybe I'll move or put into a pot somewhere. Thank you for watching the rockery tour and I hope it inspires you to try out making a rockery. It's not a very large area, probably maximum three meters squared and the amount of plants you can pack in and the amount of levels you get. So when you go down, I think it's just really dramatic. So I hope that inspires you to think about doing rockery planting. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.